Escuchen esto, el 6 CPC da de baja a uno de los integrantes de la banda del Zulia, Kevin Finol. Esa misma banda que caía tiros a los comercios, que no cancelaban la extorsión. Hubo un intercambio de disparos, lo acorralaron, intercambio de disparos y allí lo asesinaron. Vamos a escuchar esta conversación que sostuvimos con un funcionario del Departamento de Estado. Oigan las advertencias, nuevas advertencias que hace Estados Unidos a Maduro. I will start with this question. Jorge Rodriguez, uh, the president of the regime's National Assembly, said yesterday that he will not sign anything else at the negotiation table until all sanctions are lifted. Are you going to agree with that? Our policy on Venezuela and the upcoming elections have been very clear. When the, reg when the people running the, g the government in Venezuela change their behavior and make progress toward having elections, we will change our sanctions. We made a, a move last uh, November when we offered a license to Chevron um, a, as a gesture to start those negotiations, and uh, we expect to see uh, progress in those negotiations, um, and uh, we will uh, wait to see uh, how those talks come out. Okay. I, I have been informed of a third visit by a Biden administration officials to Caracas. They tell me that the delegation of the ambassador's story could go. Could you tell us who is going and for what purpose? Um, what they have told us is that this administration would talk about the possible exchange of Alex Saab and maybe resume the consular relationship with Maduro. Is it so? First, let me just say that regarding Alex Saab, it is categorically false that we have any intention to trade him in the uh, context of these negotiations. Okay. With regard to visits to Venezuela, uh, we are on the record as having made visits in the past. Um, I don't have anything to announce today about any um, upcoming visits, but uh, the priority for us is the well-being of American citizens. There are American citizens in prison. Some of them have been determined to be wrongfully detained. Um, that is one of our top priorities in the State Department is to be able to check on their well-being. Okay, but are you thinking about uh, resume this consular relationship with Maduro at some point? So we have no intention to recognize the government of Maduro. These have been uh, uh, um, ad hoc visits uh, that we have arranged with the uh, with the people running the uh, government in Venezuela, and so we uh, have made those visits before. Um, and we again, we will do what we can to visit the detained Americans in Venezuelan prisons. Okay. The Biden administration said that if it did not see results from Maduro in three months at that time, they would reverse all the concessions that they, uh, they have made to him. A, a year has, has passed. Is this administration going to reverse sanctions? Uh, what I will say is that we do not have unlimited patience when it comes to seeing progress in these talks. We have uh, gone to great political risk to extend these uh, concessions to the um, people in, involved in the talks, and we want to see progress. So um, we have nothing to announce today about changing that policy, but our patience is not unlimited. Mm -hmm. Maduro reinforces the alliance with Putin and Ortega, uh, doing businesses with him, from the United States is not helping him strengthen those alliances? Talking about the oil, for example. The Maduro's relationship with, uh, with, with Russia. With Putin and, and Ortega, yes. And Ortega. I mean, our, our, our position on those governments is very clear. Uh, governments that have relations with uh, uh, Russia and Nicaragua need to ask themselves what side of, the, uh, of th this fight they're on with regard to de democracy. Um, certainly neither of these uh, governments are in favor of returning democracy to Venezuela. Um, they assist in sanctions evasion, and uh, the faster that we can get Venezuela on a track toward uh, uh, free and fair elections in uh, 2024 uh, will be better. Okay. Uh, does, does the Iranian warship that came to the coast of Brazil represent a threat to the United States because Iran wanted to take him uh, this, this boat, this, um, this uh, warship, to Venezuela and at the time the United States told Maduro that this would mean crossing a red line. Why do you allow it uh, to be in Brazil? I don't have any information about what you just said. Okay. Uh, what I will say is uh, we don't agree that that ship should have had any port calls in, uh, in the Western Hemisphere. Okay. Uh, the, in the intent by Iran is to project um, power and influence in the region. That's something that we simply don't reject. That is a, a murderous human rights violating regime, and we have stated that to, uh, to Brazil as well. 
um, okay. when, when they uh, went ahead with that visit. We said we simply do not agree that people should uh, allow the Iranian port call. Is the United States going to recognize the National Assembly in Caracas, the legitimate one, as the executive branch? Well, right now what we say is we have recognized them as the last democratically elected body in Venezuela. Uh, there are certain legal questions with regard to uh, recognizing that them as an executive branch, so I don't have anything to announce today about that. Okay, you are, you are right, because uh, that violates the Venezuelan constitution, and an interim president to exercise his state power must be in the country, and the president of the National Assembly is out of Venezuela. Are you considering all these factors? Uh, we have a, a, a full legal review of, of what the National Assembly itself uh, passed. Uh, we have had communication with the National Assembly uh, because they made it clear in that law that they were going to have international representatives, and we do have contact with them. Okay. What happened to the Embassy of Venezuela here in Washington? You took custody, right, well, as you announced. Uh, why didn't they hand it over or you hand it over on the delegate who has been appointed by the National Assembly as ambassador based on what argument? So um, everything that we've done has been in full coordination and cooperation of both the interim government, the outgoing interim government, and the uh, National Assembly representatives. Um, we have we are following international protocol with regard to that. I don't have anything to announce today about the disposition of the embassy. Uh, it, it is our um, obligation under international law to protect the the, uh, the and safeguard the embassy when it is not occupied. Okay, two more questions. The uh, um, United States or this administration said that have a um, neutral position on the Venezuelan case. But for four years, it was not like that because Jimmy Story convinced the opposition to support, for example, Guaido. Why did uh, you decide uh, to stop doing it uh, or have uh, this uh, neutral position? Uh, with regard to President Guaido. Uh -huh. The, that was a decision for the uh, national for the national assembly and for the uh, interim government to make. Uh, what we said was, you all get to make the decision. Uh, you, we were recognizing them as the sovereign of Venezuela, and so they got to make that decision, and that's where they came out. What we said was, we were not going to express an opinion because we wanted them to make their own decision. Mm. The final question is about Nicaragua. If you let me, um, the Nicaraguan community is uh, here in the U.S. denounced that three of officials of the Ortega regime entered the country as alleged uh, baseball coaches and are asking that the State Department expel them. What is the State Department response about that? Are you reviewing this? I don't have information on that. I will say that we categorically denounced the, the Ortega regime uh, and we uh, were very proud to be able to assist in the, the uh, liberation of uh, 222 political prisoners. Um, and we call on them to, uh, to uh, release all of their political prisoners, uh, some that remain behind, as well as to make the necessary reforms for true democracy in Nicaragua. Mr. Wells, thank you so much for your time. It's, uh, it is a, a, a great pleasure to be with you and to see you uh, once again. I'm glad uh, all, all the success on your show in Miami and a, and a, a welcome to and a saludos to all of your uh, um, your uh, viewers in, in Miami and in Venezuela. Thank you. Thank you again. Le agradezco muchísimo la oportunidad al equipo de prensa del Hub Miami, Hub Washington, del Departamento de Estado y por supuesto al, al secretario Adjunto Wells. Voy a regresar con las opiniones del congresista Mario Díaz Valar. Casa Design Furniture, su imaginación, nuestro diseño. Somos una empresa que nace con el deseo de brindarle a nuestros clientes espacios únicos e inigualables. En el estado de la Florida, estamos localizados en Miami y Tampa, pero llegamos a todos los Estados Unidos. Ofrecemos opciones de financiamientos para personas sin crédito o mal crédito. Y si tu crédito califica, te podemos brindar hasta 48 meses sin intereses. En Casa Design Furniture, estamos para ustedes.